a very common problem often asked during interviews is can you identify the active records from any given table the interviewer can even ask you to design a solution where you have to implement changes to handle soft delete situation and identify active records from any given table hi everyone my name is ritin shivastha as part of this video i am taking an example of employees table the employee table will have some uh, sample records in it going forward there will be some changes and if the employee moves from one department to another then we should be able to track it make the employee inactive in the previous department and make him active in the current department also if the employee leaves the company then the record should be soft deleted that is the record should be set to inactive state we don't have to physically delete those record because in the future if the employee joins the company back the employee will retain the same email id the same employee id so as part of this video we'll go through the problem statement so the problem statement is identify the active employees in the company's department now it may require real changes how are you going to handle active and inactive records in the table you can add a flag column to show inactive records date columns you can also add date columns in the table and this is considered as a much better approach because with date you also get the information that on which date actually the record was inactive or when the record was reactivated as well depending on the detail changes you will implement for this problem statement you also have to implement corresponding solution for it So, if you are going for a flag column, in that case, you may want to use a where category, hard coded pattern. Solution two is you may go for a date column or some flag column, and you want to set that value as null for active records and some value for inactive records. So, in that case, you may want to use a pattern is null of category where the first two solutions are good enough to cater to most of the situations. Just in case, if you want, you can also implement the similar requirement using Windows function. The pattern you can use there is row number. I'll just rephrase it. Whatever I have said, you have to implement DDL changes, and then you have to implement an SQL solution to retrieve the active records. You may want to add a column to be used in filter. This can be numeric, string, character, boolean, or date column. Example. is active column is added into the table if it is numeric it can have value as 1 for active records if it is char in that case it may have a value of 5 for active records if it is a string then value of yes if it is boolean that true and false will work if it is date then 2999 12 31 which is a very future distant date can also work to identify active records and you can also use is null If you don't want to implement these solutions you can also use window function row number pattern to fetch the most recent record for each id for example you can do a row number over partition by id since the id for each employee will remain same you can use partition by id and order by start date there has to be a column which can help you in sorting the data the most recent one should come at the top because in the filter you want to do the row number equal to one value now let's switch to the sql where i'll share you the exact sql to do the ddl changes as well as the sql which you can run to get the solution so now i have open sql fiddle and in this i have created a sample employees table with some column right now the table only has one entry for each employee and we are not maintaining any soft delete the requirement has come from the business team that going forward you have to maintain soft delete records as well read problem description again given a table employees with sample rows when an employee leave the job you have to soft delete the record from employee table an employee may leave the company or may switch to another department requirement identify only the active employees in the company department this is a table with employee table with id name city email date of birth and department name as the columns and i have sample records five records in the table so now to implement the soft delete right the first solution which i proposed was that we can add so what i will do is i'll just add uh, copy paste it and create another table here and let me name it as 
FLG for flag and I'll add a flag column. So we also read that flag can be of any type. So let me create a char1 column which will have value as y and n. And by default, I'll keep everything as y. It means that all the records are active, right? And uh, I will use the same table name here. It writes flag. So this is my schema. And I'll build my schema. We'll focus on employees underscore flag. Okay. So what I'll do is employees underscore flag. I'll just run this and I'll show you the output. So if you see here, is active. All the records are active. So say the employee, uh, John Smith, tomorrow he moves out of the company. So I have to set update employees underscore flag set is active equals to no where id equals to one. So what I have to do is I basically have to set this employee as inactive so i'll change the flag value from y to n for this now when i'll run this query you see i will not get the output john smith i'll not get john smith in the output right because this record has been soft deleted and it is no more active so this is one way of implementing the soft delete where you add a flag column you set the value to y anyways but I will not encourage to go ahead with this approach and the reason being is you don't have any information for this employee that on which date the employee got inactive when he moved out of the company or if he switches from one department to another department then what happened on what date did he move, right? So the other way was to add a date column. So what I will do is again I'll just copy this create table this and copy it here I'll create another table. I will give the name as date. And here I will create another column. And this time I will call it as end date. The data type will be date. And default I will set it as null. Right. And this is I think at least personally this is a better approach than having a, a string or a numeric value. And I will create this table now. And now I will run the query where employees underscore date. And this is another pattern where we actually use is null because null cannot be used with any other operators but is. So we have to write where end date is null. I will run this query and see the output. So if you see here, all the records right now are active and uh, the end date is set as null. So similarly, just like this, I will again send the end date value. Say this person moved out of the company on 2023 August, 10th of August. This person moved out of the company, right? So, so I'll just run this query. I'll create the schema. And now when I'll run this, hopefully I will not get this output. So you see, right? John Smith is not in the output because the end date is not null. So what, just to show you clearly, so that you understand it clearly and there is no confusion, I'll just run this query on the entire table. I have this record here. So if you can see, I have John Smith in the table and the end date is 10th of August 2023. So that this employee moved out of the company on 10th of August. This is much more information than just setting the flag value to Y and yes, no, true, false, 1 or 0. This is my personal preference that if I have to set up a soft delete rather than having a flag value like true or false, I prefer to have a date column. By default, I set it to the null value for all the active records and the day the records are expired or become inactive, I set it to that particular date, right? So this is certainly much more information than uh, one more solution we talked about is that if you don't want to go ahead with this approach, right, then what you can do is, uh, I will not suggest to use this approach, but still if you want to, you should know there is an alternative solution also. So which is, I'll create another, which was to use a window function, right. So I'll create a table with window. And here you don't necessarily need an end date, but you need a start date, right. And by default, you can put it as current date, right. And 
Yeah, so start date by default has the current date value in it and employee win. In this case, what will happen? I will maintain multiple records for my employee. So let me just run this, click job and I will run the query here. You see here, right now, all the employees are here and this is the current date. So all the employees have started today. Now what I will do is I'll add one more row here. Okay. I will add one more row. Say the first employee, John Smith, right? He moved from IT department to say HR department, right? So everything will remain same. Only thing is the start date will change. So start date, say tomorrow. Current date plus two. Say two days from now, uh, John Smith will move from IT to HR department. So let me just add this new record into the table. And now let me show you how the table data looks like. I want you to focus on employee ID 1. So employee ID 1 IT he started on 27th, 22nd July. On 24th July, this guy will move to HR department, right? Now, if I have to read, like, what are the active records, right? So, in this case, I have to do create a window function. And window function, primarily the row number function I will use here over partition by. And now I know that ID is unique for each employee. So, I'll do partition by ID, order by start date, and I'll do descending as record from employee. And then I'll just create this as a table, a derived table. Uh, some people prefer creating CT. We can create CT as well. But yeah, in this case, it's pretty straightforward. So I'll go ahead with the derived table only where recent record equal to what. And for the column list, I want these columns. If I do select star, what will happen? I will also get the row number, which I don't want in the output. Select column list. From this, if you want, I can also publish start date and then I'll just run this query and see the output. The John Smith one, and this time I'm getting the HR entry for John Smith. I'm not getting the IT because the most recent entry for John Smith is HR, it is not IT. So that's how I'll get the active record using a window function. So, hope the solutions are clear to you. If you're going ahead with a flag column, you can use any type. Most of the data types support it, but I'll prefer to have a, a date as a flag column. It has its own advantage. It tells you the date at which the records was, the record became inactive. There is an alternate approach. You use start date column, and then you use a window function to pick the most recent start date for each employee. So hope this helps the overall the process, how we design the solution, how we write the SQL, how we get the output. Hope this helps. I'll share the link for these sequels in the description box below so you can go there and check.